I had a couple of fucking moments, but I would say the first one that came to my mind was I, I was, I had a great film to do with Oliver Stone. This is Oscar all day type shit. True story called Pinkville. Pinkville was about the My Lai massacre that happened during Vietnam. And long story short, they sent a bunch of so soldiers out there who killed a whole community. And they just shits and giggle when they laid it all down, essentially raped the women, killed, killed. And it was just a, a one little um, troop of soldiers. And then their lives were ruined after that. When they all came back home, they ended up with these terrible lives. And the character I was to portray was, um, he just had this, this, this fucked up life and he ended up very dependent on, on these drugs. The fuck it moment came for me when about a week before we were to go film that in Thailand, and mind you, I had to go through a lot to do this. I met with, I, Bruce Willis was in that movie at the time, and uh, uh, I forget all the people. It was, it was a star cast, it was a great cast. And I had to wear a prosthetic suit, because I'm a lean dude, but this dude was a chunky dude, so I had to go do this uh, prosthetic uh, stuff where they where they put you in, 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 in um, plaster. So they have to plaster cast your head to make that stuff. I'm terribly claustrophobic. So they have to plaster cast your head to make these um, prosthetic pieces that I had to wear to make me look bigger than I am. When they plaster cast you, they, they put this, this, this stuff on your head, which is like a gel. They put it all over your face and your head. And they basically wrap you like a mummy. And they stick two straws in your nose so you can breathe. And you gotta be like that for about 45 minutes. And then they cut that shit open and they tell you like, at first you hear them like the way you guys hear me, but eventually you just barely hear them because they're covering your ears with the stuff, right? So you can't hear them. So they tell you, they're shouting, if you have a problem, tap me, tap on me and I, I'll, we'll start cutting this shit off your head straight away. If you have any kind of issue, just, and we'll cut this off your head straight away. So I'm using all this mind over matter I'm like, nah, I ain't gonna, I know Eddie Murphy did this a hundred times. I can't, I can't tap out. I know lots of kids have done this. Everybody did this. I just can't tap out. So, you know, I can only, at this time, I'm only breathing out of one damn nostril anyway. So now they got the goddamn nostril plugged up. I'm like about to die in this motherfucker. Like I'm dumb, I'm scared as hell. Like, and I feel like I'm a faint cause I'm not getting enough air, oxygen in that motherfucker. But I'm a trooper. So I'm in there like, I'm about to, I'm about to pass out if I had to, but I ain't gonna tap out. <laughs> so. Finally, they, you know, it's over. They cut me out of that shit, and it's cool. I survived it. A week later, they canceled the movie. The movie never got done. And it was a week before we had to leave. So it was a week before Christmas. We did all kinds of studying for it, bro. When I tell you, I had to meet up with Oliver, meet up with um, Bruce. I ended up doing another movie with Bruce Willis like about two years ago, but this was probably about eight years ago. I had to meet up with Oliver Stone so much for the role. I mean, after I got the role, all of the stuff, that we, it was intense. My agents and everybody was like, yo, this is the Oscar thing. You're gonna, you're gonna kill this. I was like, yeah, I am gonna kill this. I'm gonna kill this. Cause this guy was very different than me and it was something I could do kind of easily. So I knew I would get into it and really do a lot of hard work on it. Yeah, it went away, it went away. And the fucking moment for me became, I realized from that, that I don't let myself get rejected in a sense where I didn't feel rejected that, that if, if I don't get a role in something, I don't feel rejected. If something goes away, I no longer feel any kind of way from it. I feel like that was a little bit of my dues I had to pay because I was so high on the hog, I was telling everybody about it, I'm about to go do this, this is gonna be killer, and it went away. It just went away. And the reason why it went away is because Bruce Willis had a beef with Oliver Stone, they had different political views. And also, so they had a lot of conflicts. And also, um, Meryl Streep and Tom Cruise had a movie that tremendously flopped. Cost 100 million, made three. So because it made three million, the next slated movie was my film, and they opted to not, it cost too much. The movie went away. I gained from that though, I gained like now I'm like, well, if the movie goes, if something goes away, I don't have abandonment issues. Let's just put it to you that way. Like I'm okay with what I have. I'm okay with what I'm gonna get because I'm gonna work hard for what I get. 
and um, anybody never giving me nothing. But things can be taken away. I know things can be taken away that you went and worked hard for. So I had never experienced it before. And I was very, very fortunate and lucky in the game. You know, getting my first movie. I'm in a lot of classics, and um, um, that would have been one. And there'll be more, more classics. But um, that particular film, I was real, I was really hungry to do that film, and uh, I think it would have opened up a whole nother, or just a, a beautiful course for me in terms of th those type of movies. Working with Oliver Stone too. So, yeah. <laughs>